Hey, welcome everybody. This is going to be a tutorial uh, from start to finish to be able to get a TFTP server up and running. And for the first tutorial, I'm going to show how to make a boot image work. And that boot image is going to be a floppy, an old floppy boot image that has compatibility with Windows DAWs. Okay, so it's going to be a DAWs type of format, but there's only a few modifications required. And what you can do is you can make it to where that you can install ISOs over the network. Those ISOs will allow you to boot up things like BART PE or Windows XP Live. And I will show how to do that in the in the next tutorial on the same service. I'll show how to get that to work. But this one's going to be setting up a TFTP server, get it up and running inside a virtual box, but it would work on your regular host. But this is to deploy. Now, ultimately, what I'm going to do is deploy images on the network. So let me continue here. So I'm going to go open up virtual box. And what I'm going to do here in VirtualBox is I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. And I'm going to set this original one up in Windows XP. So I'm going to click Next on this. I'm going to call this one Windows XP. And leave it. I only have a 32-bit Windows XP, so I'm going to set that up. Let me click Next on it. I'm probably going to up this to 256 megs of RAM in here, which will be fine for this computer. Click Next on it again. And I'm going to create a new hard disk. Click Next on it, and I'm going to leave it as a VDI, our VirtualBox disk image. Click Next on it as well, and I'm going to leave it as dynamically allocated. And I'll click Next on it, and I'm going to change the drive size. Since I'm going to have a little bit of an image, I want to have a little room to play around with on here for a later project with the same OS, and I'm going to make it 40 gigs. So it'll be a 40 gigabyte drive. And so, actually, this you know let's go up a little bit higher than that. Let's make it. 80 gigs okay so an 80 gig drive this is Windows XP click next on it create and create looks like our our option is created now this is going to be an internal network I'm not going to have it allow it to be a bridged network so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to go to the one I just created right click on it and go to settings and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the network and I'm going to change it to an internal network card Right. and then I'm going to go over to storage then once I'm inside of storage I'm going to highlight the empty folder click the CD-ROM icon I'm going to choose my virtual disk now my ISO is I downloaded into a folder called ISO but what you want to do is uh, dramatically this will speed up the process if you create an ISO of a CD image like your Windows XP or Vesta or Windows 7 and you do an, an ISO, it's going to dramatically speed up this process. So what I'm going to do now, since I selected my ISOs are under ISOs on my desktop, yours would be a Windows XP. Here's my Windows XP ISO. I'm going to go ahead and load that in there. And I'll start the load process here. And as you can see, Windows XP is going to start up here. And it's going through the install. And you see that's going through pretty quickly here. And as it starts to install, I'm going to go ahead and pause it afterwards here so you guys can see it. I'm going to OK these windows so I don't have to be bothered with them. Hit enter on it. And go ahead and hit F8 to continue through on it. And I'm just going to hit enter on that drive and I'm going to do a quick format on it. And now it's installing. I'm going to go ahead and pause it until it gets a little farther through it and I'll be back. As you can see, it's just about done. It's got a little bit more loading to go through. And it'll almost be done here in a sec. It is rebooting.
So it's still installing. Let's continue through part of this setup here. I'm going to make it a friendly name. I'm not going to put any password in it. Click next on it. And it looks like it's just about done here. It's rebooting, I think, for the first time. Taking a second for its first time. Finish the install here. Click next on it. It's trying to connect to the internet, which it's not going to, which is not really our concern at this moment. We're going to skip how it's going to connect to the internet and we're not going to register it at this time. Let us call this one test. Alright, just about done here. Alright, now we got the regular screen. I'm going to change the size of this really quick. Properties. Make it just a little bit bigger here. Okay. Looks like I may have got it a little bit too big, so I'm gonna have to go back to the 800 by 600. That way it fits inside of my recording screen here. All right, there we go. Let's go back to it. All right, so I'm gonna need to download a couple of files, some that I've already set up. Hang on just a minute while I go get those. All right, here we go. Let me go ahead and turn on the thumb drive. This is my 30 gig drive. I'm going to go ahead and detect it here. Looks like it's got to load a couple of driver drivers for both my host and for the virtual box. I'm waiting for it to finish. I just loaded the virtual box folder. Here it goes. It's popping up inside a virtual box. Now you can do this, you can do it from a network share, you can do this any way you like. I have everything that I need on a thumb drive and I'm going to show you where I got these files at here in just, just one moment. Okay, I'm going to check out my computer, go to my removable drive and I want to copy this folder over that I have. Now if you're in the class what you want to do is you want to go to the servers that we have in the classroom and you want to download the MDT space 2012 project. I'm going to copy that to my desktop here. I'll pause this until it's done. Alright, looks like it's just about done. Let's finish it up here. Go ahead and set up the settings here as it's finishing copying.
right. Hang on just a sec here. All right, let's go ahead and uh, reassume the setup here. So I've downloaded this folder. One of the things I set up in here, it's got a few files in here. You guys want to download everything that's set, or I'm sorry, you want to download Notepad Plus, which is this little installer right here. Notepad Plus is where I got this. So if you look up on the web, now since I already copied all these things down, I'm going to show you guys this here. Okay, has this little icon if you go on the web itself. And I'm just going to type in, go to Google here. And I'm going to go ahead and set this as my main page inside of here because I get a little tired of going back and going to MSN. So I'm going to type in Notepad Plus. As you guys can see, there it is. Okay, it takes you to this website here, which is called notepad.home. So you guys see the name here, it says notepad-plus-plus.org, and you want to download that. This is to edit the configuration files, although you could use WordPad, just do not use Notepad because it causes it to wrap around. So I would use Notepad Plus. You just go to the download page here, and you can download the newest one right here. Okay, with the installer. So just so you guys know, that's where I got that one from. And the other thing here that I downloaded was they had a guide, which is called a PXE guide. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to actually extract that to the desktop here. And I'm also going to show you where that came from as well. All right. In the PXE guide, if you'll notice, it pops up on here and it says this downloadable version of this guide. So I want to show you where this came from on the web. I'm going to click on it here, and just so you know where the web, whoops, just so you know where the website is. Yeah, I'm trying to make that show up here. Let's see, can I get back here to this one? So, the name of the website is, is where you need where I got this guide from. I type in Notepad, and I'll type this up where this guide came from. It was called D I D D Y dot boot dash L A N D dot net. Let's give it a try here really quick. Open up the web browser and go to that site. And it did. Uh, let's see, where is the guide at on here? Oh, it's under other guides and tutorials on this main site. And then I'm going to go up here. There should be a PXE guide on here. P set, I believe it's setting up a PXE Windows server. And there we go. So you guys can see where this actually came from. And then he offers a way to download it here, which is this one here. And you notice this is the file that I saved that I already have a copy of. It's called PXE underscore guide dot zip. So I'm just showing you guys where it is, where this gentleman made it at, so you guys know where to download what I have. So it's under the diddy dot boot dot r dash land dot net, and then guides, and then it's under tutorials, and then you'll see the link right here where it says set up Windows PXE or XP PXE server. All right. So now you know where I got the files at, and if you notice. Go ahead and close out of this, cancel this because I already have it. Alright, so if you'll take a look at this introduction, it has some good information for you guys to read throughout this introduction. So I highly suggest you read it in its entirety, whether or not it may be for your application. I'm going to show you guys how to set this up for using on a Microsoft network so that you can boot exp up to an XP image. Now again, I'm going to use an, a floppy image to try it out with. So I'm going to go back and Let's kind of get started right here where it says we're going to create the share. 
Now, it has this guide in here, and in some cases you may have to use this setup, but on all the XP machines I've set this up, I've had no issues with this being a problem. So, what I'm going to do is it's asking me to create a folder, basically to start off with, if you look back on the very beginning of what you want to do, where it's going to say configure it, before starting it's telling you a list of all the different files. Well, we're going to run this script to create these folders right here, which is one dash create folders, but what I want to do is I want to show you how to do that. So let's go back to the guide here, and that means to create them folders. Let's go back, and there was a folder under the PXE guide project, which is right here, which I decompressed. So I'm going to double click on that one, go to the scripts, and it says right here, one under, excuse me, one underscore create folders. I'm going to double click on that and run this one. And it looks like it created all the folders for me. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to take a look on here. Go back to start. Go to my computer. And I'm going to take a look here on drive C. Open up the contents here. Look, it did create it. PXE, TFTPD, and TFTP boot. So it did create all the folders for me, which is good. Alright, so what I want to do now, I have all my folders created, you notice that? So the one main one that we're going to copy things into is this folder here, which is called the prelinux.cfg. And you notice what it made? It made also a PXE FTP boot. Now the only file that's going to be contained in here is our, going to be our boot file. So let's go back now that we've created that, and let's go back to my folder, my project folder. Now if you're looking at the script folder, now this is the PXE guide, okay? Now remember, the PXE guide folder, when I click on the index, I can load this web page up. And if I click on the little tab here where it says configure PXE Linux, right? And you drag down a little bit, what this is going to do is this is going to show you that these are the files that need to be copied, which are right here. So what I want to do is I want to search for those files. But to do that correctly, I'm going to keep this minimized. And what I'm going to do is I want to find where those files are at. So what I need to do is I need to extract this particular folder. And I'll show you what file that is. By looking at the guide, just so you know where I'm talking about, go back here really quick. And you see where it says configure PXE Linux? Well, there's a file right here. It's telling you to download this file right here, which is called SYS Linux 3.80. Well, I've downloaded a newer version. They've made many versions new since the last time of this creation. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the one that I copied, which is the one is SYS Linux 4.5. So all you have to do is look that up on the web where it is, or if you're on the configuration guide, there's a link here that says where it possibly is and where you can find it. So, that one is let's go back here right in the very beginning where it says required free tools and here it is right here on the main page where it says PXE Linux loader and then when you go to that website you're gonna have a bunch of different information on here so all you want to do is find out the newest one and you want to go to the download page on this site that's all you have to do to be able to get this one to work so I've downloaded mine already from here so the one that I have, just remember, you just look it on, just do a Google search on it. If you can't find it from that link, it'll be easy enough to find on the web, okay? So, just so you know where I'm at with that, go ahead and go back here. I'm going to go back to the Configure Lexi Linux. So, I need a copy. One, two, three, four, five. Five files. So, this is my first file that I'm going to copy right here. That is PXE Linux.0 into the TFTP boot which is right here. I'm going to copy this file into this folder. Okay? So let's do that now. But first I need to extract that file which is called the syslinux. Let me copy that onto my actually let me extract that into a folder on my desktop. And it's asking me, it's telling me it's going to create a folder on my desktop called SysLinux405. That's fine. I'm going to click Next on it. Remember, don't try to copy these files from inside of the compressed folder. You need to make sure that you dump them into another folder so that they're all uncompressed. And you notice now that I have that folder 
right here it created this folder right here so this has everything I need in it so if I go back to the configure page and you notice where it says copy space C colon temp core now the way that their tutorial works he has you make everything and put it in a temp folder but it's all you need to kind of disregard this temp folder but what you need to do is find the folder that I did which is right which is right here okay here's my files inside of here okay so if I go back look back on this one see right here the only thing is is that I don't have all my stuff on the desktop but I need to find this folder I mean this file under this folder which is called core so if I go back and you'll see there's core right there one other thing that I have to do to make sure I can see the file extensions when I click on that file you notice that none of these have file extensions on them I don't want to have a duplicate file so I need to go to tools folder options and then view and then I'm going to go to show hidden files and folders uncheck hide extensions for known file types and then uncheck hide protected operating system okay so I'm going to apply that and now when I go back into the core you notice that I have extensions I have like bias.inc and I have a bunch of them so the only thing I'm looking for is that PXE so let's type in P and I'm going to find that one that says PXE Linux.0. There it is right there. You guys see that one right there? So I'm going to right click on that, copy, and I'm going to add that back over onto my server here, onto my root folder. Go to C drive, PXE, and then TFTP boot. And I'm going to copy that into this file. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and copy under the memdisk folder I need to copy the memdisk file so let's go back to that I just usually highlight one of these files and then hit the key that I want to find so there's memdisk and then just the plain old memdisk file inside of here there it is right there copy and I'm gonna go back to my C drive PXE TFTP boot and I'm going to copy all of these next files into the PXE Linux.cfg folder. Copy that in here. So I'm going to paste. All right. Let's go back to the other one, which is under this folder. And the next one's going to be I'm going to copy under Chrome 32 menu and then here's the file name right here. Okay, so I'm going to copy this one and this one at the same time because they're all in the same, they're both in the same menu. So I'm going to go back to my Linux and then it says I need to go to menu file. Oh, Chrome, sorry. Chrome first. And then I want to find menu in here. There's menu. And I want to copy the two files. One is this one, the Vesta menu.c32. I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to select, let's see, the other one is menu C32. See these two here? So I'm going to copy these into the other folder, into my a Linux configuration folder, paste these, and now I have one more file to copy in here. Let's go back to it, and that file is called chain.c32, and that's under the mo Chrome 32 modules. So let's go back. Yeah, here it is, Chrome 32 modules. And then it's CH or chain. There it is, chain C32. Copy. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to my pre Linux CFG folder and paste that one in there. So, last but not least, I need to set up my configuration file. So, I need to right click in here and go to new and then a text document. And then I'm going to type in default. Whoops, got a little typo there. Well, I can't spell tonight. So I'm going to type in default, and then I'll hit enter on it. 
And yes, I wanted to notice that it doesn't recognize a file extension, doesn't have one on it. So now, last but not least, I want to install my Notepad Plus. If I did not, let me check to see if I did. Right click on it. Nope, I didn't. Doesn't have that separate menu in there. So I'm going to install my Notepad Plus, like I had you guys download earlier. Install it. And I'm just selecting the defaults on here, no special settings, no special setup. It's going to open it up right off the bat. We're okay with that. Let's go back to CFG folder. Let's right click on the default. Look at that. Now it has edit with Notepad Plus. So we'll bring that up. And we need to go back to our configure PXE Linux guide. Go back on it. And then what I want to do is I want to go down here on setting this up. So configure PXE Linux and then I want to go right down a little bit further. So if we're going to set up a DAWs menu, this is how it's set up. This is my first one. If I'm going to set up one with a splash screen so I can have my own custom interface, then I'm going to do this and add the following file in there to boot up the screen. But I'm just going to do a DAWs one for the first time. Highlight this area where it says default uh, pre PE Linux CFG menu.c32. I'm going to copy this and I'm gonna add that on my first line inside of my default file so I'm gonna paste that okay let me go back to my configure Linux and I'm gonna go back and if I drag this down a little bit you see where it says booting disk images okay you click on that and if you notice right here it has these disks are available on this website if you click on this little link right here it's gonna take you to those those floppy boot images and you can load any one of these into that setup to run them Look, it looks like this one has the most information on there. Oh no, take that back. Um, it looks like the ODIN28880 looks like it has the most options in it, which is 2.8 megabytes. So that might be an option, but at least this is the one that's on the guide. So what you do to save this is you right click on this and you say save target as okay and then you save it to what you want so if you wanted to download this one I just call it IMG and I would save this one to the desktop and it downloaded it just so you can see and minimize this so you can see where it went Oh, there it is right there. There's the one right there. So you would want to make sure you take off that HTML on it so it stays an image file. There it is. Now Windows, of course, doesn't recognize what that file is, so that's what you wanted if I was downloading a new one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the one that's already there. So let's go back to our guide. And I'm going to boot a floppy. And notice where it says booting disk images. So I'm going to copy this one little area right here. This is part of my menu. I'm going to right click on that, copy it, go back to the PXE boot. I just like adding two lines in it. So it just says that the label is going to say ODIN. And then it's going to say the menu label is going to be ODIN when it starts. And the kernel right here is going to boot up from memdis to, to use part of it. And I'm going to actually load this image right here, which is the ODIN1440.image. Okay. So now that I'm done with this default file, I'm going to save it. And I can close everything down out of that one. And the last thing I need to copy is that mem file. So what I did under my project folder, but I also showed you guys where you could download it from the web. I actually copied that image right in here. So I'm going to right click on this, copy it, and then I'm going to go into the My Computer folder, and I'm going to go back to my C drive, my PXE folder, TFTP boot, and I'm going to find this folder called Disks. There it is right here. This is Disks. So it's PXE TFTP boot disks. I'm going to copy that, paste that in there. I'm sorry, I'm going to paste it in there because I already copied it. So, how that works, if I go back into that folder, I'll show you here, guys. So, what you're doing is you go back to my computer, C drive, PXE, I'm going to go to TFTP boot, and then I'll show you right here under the PXE CFG. Here's my default folder right here. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to go to 
edit with notepad and you can see here so what I did is I told it I want to boot to this image but look what it's saying it already knows that it's going to be under disks backslash and here's the image name so just so you know that's where I got that from there's also on the guide it also explains what each one of those processes does now that we've copied all these files over we're ready to boot up the PXE server to make this work so to do that we need to install the TFTP so the TFTP was in this project that I had but remember the guide that I showed you about talks about all these things in it and they talk about it right up here when you get to the guide it says required free software tools and it lists TFTP32 the pre Linux folder you want to install use the grub 4.0 and then 7-zip and then bind if you're going to set it up under a remote install server which we're not doing oh, excuse me it's getting late <sighs> alright so now I'm going to minimize this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up that TFTP server so I'm going to go in here and double click on my project folder and let me copy the TFTP server onto the top here let me copy it okay now I've just downloaded the newest one which is TFTP 4.0 I'm just going to install this one so double click run it and in the documentation it says what I need to do is I want to put it into this folder now the only modification I need to do go where it's going to actually install is change it right here. PXE. So and it's going to go into the TFTP folder, which is already there. So I'm going to go ahead and install it. Click OK on it. And now we're going to start the process of configuring it. So what I need to do, since I'm in VirtualBox, I need to right click on my my internal network card and I need to turn it into an internal one. Because if you'll notice, it's a bridged adapter which is not going to work for the internet because I have a DHCP server here on my network so I need to make it all internal. By doing internal you can work with inside of VirtualBox and add another VirtualBox just like it's a whole network world from inside the computer. So I'm going to change the bridge adapter to an internal network adapter. That usually makes Windows XP a little mad tells it because you can't find it. There it goes. It's telling it not to reinitialize in the network card. Alright probably done now. I'm going to go to start, go to control panel, change out this classic mode. I'm going to go to the network connections and I'm going to right click on my local area connection here and I'm going to give it my own IP address. Okay. So to do that, just as you guys saw, I'm going to highlight TCP IP and go to properties. I'm going to kind of make up one that's an internal one. So I'm going to do 192.168.1.0 one okay I'm gonna tab down to the next row whoops I made a typo there I meant one nine two uh, and you definitely know that that sub mask is incorrect there we go okay so this is a class C license or class C and I'm using the cloud, the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0, okay? That's all I need for the network anyways. I don't need a default gateway, DNS, or anything. So I'm going to click OK on that. Click OK on it as well. And then now I'm going to configure the TFTP server with DHCP so it'll boot up to my other Windows virtual box. And it's taking a second to configure. All right, it's done. Close out of this. And now, now I don't need this TFTP anymore because that's what I just installed. So just so you know, you only needed to install that once. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to delete the Notepad Plus. So I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to go to the TFTP32. Sure, because it's already on the desktop. And my firewall is asking me to open up an exception, which I want to answer yes, but ultimately we're going to need to turn the firewall off for it to work correctly. Notice that it already found the, the IP address. So we just have some features on right here that we need to turn off. So I'm going to click down here on settings, and I want to turn off DHC, well, I'm going to leave DHCP server on, turn off syslog server, and turn off TFTP client. Okay, and then also turn off enable IPv6. 
I'm going to go to the TFTP folder up here on tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select TFTP security to none. And I'm going to turn off everything else but just this one that says option negotiation or negotiation. Yeah. I want to leave that one on. And I'm going to go, it's asking me for what the base directory is. That's the directory where I have the boot file at. So in my case, since I'm using the boot file, it's going to be PXE Linux dot zero. Okay. So I'm going to go to browse and I'm going to go to my computer, the C drive, PXE, and then right here where the folder says TFTP boot. Okay. Click OK on that. And it loaded right there. Remember, no other options turn on but except option negotiation. And I'm going to go to the DHCP server. So if you remember right, my DHCP server's starting IP address was 192.168.200.1. So what I need to do in here is I can't use the same IP address, but I have to use one up above, 192.200.2. You guys notice that? So since I'm only going to do this in VirtualBox and I'm not going to hand out a whole bunch of IP addresses, I'm only going to give it like maybe five, okay, even though that's a little bit more than I actually need. If I was on a network that had 50 PCs on it, then I'd need to say I'm going to give it 50 IP addresses. So now what I'm going to do is the boot file is called pxelinux.0. Remember, we copied that file over into the folder, into the TFTP boot folder, and that came from this file right here. Remember this one right here? Linux, go into it, which was under the core, and then it would hit the P key we can follow right down to it so you can see where it is right there remember that file was from there so just so you guys know and then what I do need to do is I don't need to set up a default router or wind server or any of those things but I do have to set up the subnet mask which is 255.255.0 so that's entirely the entire configuration for setting up this TFTP server. So to try it out, I need to make sure I OK it. It's telling me that I need to restart TFTP for the order for the changes to be affected. That means I need to close it down. And then I'm going to go back on TFTP. Start it up. Everything looks good. You notice that I have a, uh, one or two tabs missing in here. So TFTP is waiting for a service. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start up another virtual box. Create a new virtual box server here really quickly. I'll call this Win XP2. It's going to be Windows XP1 just for this one. Leave it at default for the memory. Defaults again, default again, dynamic allocated, we'll leave that as default as well. 10 gig is fine, default and create. And finally do the creation. And then I got to make sure that I turn my network card settings, go to network, make sure I turn this off of NAT to internal, okay? Remember, my other network card's internal as well. So the other thing I need to do is go to system and I need to make sure that the network card is booting first. So I need to check the network card and bump it all the way to the top of the list for the boot order. Okay, network card. All right, let's OK it. And now if everything works good, I should be able to see a boot up screen. I'm going to double click on this one. And then I'm going to wait. Yeah, it's complaining that I don't have anything set up on it, which is OK. And it's going to look for the network card. And it looks like it grabbed an IP address. It looks like it's going to send the information. And there you go. Now I have a booted image over the network running TFTP. And my first menu is the ODIN. So I'm going to click Enter on that to load it up. And you notice that I've loaded up a DOS prompt here. So I'm going to select to start the free one, the HEM, high mem syst. Hit Enter on it. And there I go. I got a DOS prompt from the network. Can I run FDisk on this one? Looks like I sure can. And look at that, I can view the information on this hard drive. So remember, I start off with a 10 gig drive, which is not formatted our partition yet, but you guys get the point. Now I can boot over to the network. You want to see that one more time? Close it down so you can see it yourself. Fire it back up again. Kind of see if we can watch what's going on in the background on the other one back here too, if you guys see this right here. So Look at that. Booted right up without an issue. Okay? And I can hit tab on it. And then it gives me an OS to select on it, which is awesome. And I can hit enter on it. And then I'm loading up 
MS DOS over the boot up controller. All right. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you guys enjoy setting this up as well. So, give me some feedback on the website. Make sure you guys let me know how much you liked it and how easily it was to set up for you guys. Thank you. Have a good day.